Okay, Jeff Babcock again, and I'm here to read to you uh, the story called Just a Dream. It's the story and the pictures by the two-time Caldecott medalist, Chris Van Halsberg, okay? We're going to read this center section here in a minute. What you've got, what you've got is a little boy, okay? His name is Walter. He's in a bed on the one in the tree, and then you go over and look at the other image over there, and... He's got his hand dipped into the, the water, possibly what you'd call the ocean, maybe, okay? Okay, let's look at the beginning, or the middle section there. Walter wishes he lived in the future so he could fly his own tiny plane and robots would, would take out the trash. And in, in reality, in the reality of the present, it is Walter's job to take out the trash, okay? And uh, he, never, he never separates the recyclables either. Walter is a litter bug who does not appreciate the beauty of nature or understand his role in keeping the planet healthy. How many of you know about that? Keeping the planet healthy. But he has this, until this fantastic journey shows him the tragic fate that could befall Earth if humans, like him, are not more careful. Are Walter's actions really helping his planet along the road to destruction, or, or, or is it all just a dream? Hmm? Well, Publishers Weekly wrote this about uh, Alsberg's book here. Not only are Just a Dream's illustrations some of the most striking Van Allsburg has ever created, but the text is his best yet. His fable builds to an urgent plea for action as it sends a rousing message of hope. Okay, here we go. Now, this book came out in 1990, okay, and I'm reading this to you in 2021. So, how many years has this book been around? Quick, quick, anybody got it? Well, 31 years. So this book was written 31 years ago, okay? Now, this guy's name is Walt Kelly, okay? And look down below there. He was born in 1913 and he died in 1973. However, he had this cartoon strip, comic strip, that was in mo all the newspapers. It was a very popular one. And it was called Pogo, okay, and there's Pogo right there, and he was the central character. Pogo was his name, and what's he doing in that picture? He is picking up trash, and he's looking back at the reader, and, and what he says is, we have met the enemy, and he is us. Okay, well, this, this poster was... Uh, Walt Kelly's famous poster for the first Earth Day on April 22nd, 1970. So Walt Kelly made it three more years before he died, okay? All right, now, what did Chris Allsberg do? Chris Van Allsberg. He used this quote, we've met the enemy and he is us, and he quoted Pogo, okay? Now, there he is. We've met the enemy, and he is us. All right. 1970 is when that poster was created. It's 2021. So how many years have gone by since that poster was, was painted or drawn by Walt Kelly? 51 years ago. More than a half a century ago. This idea has been around, you know, Earth Day, save the planet, okay? So that's what this story is about. Well, as usual, Walter stopped at the bakery on his way home from school. Um, he bought one large jelly-filled donut. He took the pastry from its bag, eating quickly <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, as he walked along, and he licked the red jelly from his fingers and then he crumpled up the, uh, the bag and he threw it at the fire hydrant. 
Well, at home, Walter saw Rose, the little girl next door, and she was watering a tree that had just been planted. It's, it's my birthday present, she said proudly. Now, Walter, he couldn't understand why anyone would want a tree for a, a present. His own birthday was just a few days away. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get any, I'm not getting some dumb plant, he told Rose. Well, after dinner that night, Walter took out the trash. Three cans stood next to the garage. One was for bottles, one for cans, and one for everything else. As usual, Walter dumped everything into one can. He was too busy to sort through the garbage, especially when there was something good on television. Now the show that Walter was so eager to watch was about a boy who lived in the future. And the boy flew around in a tiny airplane that he parked on the roof of his house. And he had a robot and a small machine that, that could make any kind of food with just the push of a button. Well, Walter went to bed wishing he lived in the future. He couldn't wait to have his own, his own tiny plane, a robot that would take out the trash, and a machine that could make jelly donuts by the thousands. And when he fell asleep, his wish came true. That night, Walter's bed traveled to dun, 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 the future. Oh, oh what's, huh? Huh? What's, what's that? Walter woke up in the middle of a huge dump. A bulldozer was pushing a heap of bulging trash bags toward him. Hey, hey, stop! He yelled. And the man driving the bulldozer put his machine in neutral. Oh, I, oh I'm sorry, he said. I uh, didn't see you. Walter looked at the distant mountains of trash and he saw half buried houses do do people live here he asked well <clears throat> not anymore answered the man a few feet from the bed was a, a rusty old street sign that read floral avenue oh <gasps> oh no gasped walter he lived on floral avenue well the driver revved up his bulldozer well <clears throat> Ah, he shouted. Oh, I got back to work. Walter pulled the covers over his head. This, this can't be the future. I'm sure it's, it's, it's just a dream. And he went back to sleep. But not for long. Holy tamale, look. Oh, there's the cover. The front of the book, the bed's up in the tree. Walter peered over the edge of his bed, which was caught in the branches of a tall tree. And down below, he could see two men carrying a large saw. Hello, hello, Walter yelled out. Oh, he he hello to you, they shouted back. Yeah, you, you, you aren't going to cut down this tree, are you? Walter asked, but the woodcutters didn't answer. They took off their jackets, rolled up their sleeves, and got to work. Back and forth, they pushed the saw, slicing through the trunk of Walter's tree. You, 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 you must need this tree for something important, Walter called down. Oh, yes, they said. Very, very important. And then Walter noticed littering on the woodcutter's jackets. He could just make out the words, quality toothpick 
company. <gasps> oh, Walter sighed, and he slid back under the blankets. <coughs> Until <coughs> Walter couldn't stop coughing. <coughs> His bed was balanced on the rim of a giant smokestack and the air was filled with smoke that burned his throat and made his eyes itch. And all around him, dozens of smokestacks belched thick clouds of, of hot, foul smoke. A workman climbed uh, one of the stacks. Hey, hey what, what is this place? Walter called out. Oh, this is the maximum strength medicine factory. The man answered, oh, oh gosh, said Walter, looking at all the smoke. What, what, kind of, <coughs> what kind of medicine do they make here? <coughs> oh, it's a wonderful medicine, the workman replied. It's for burning throats and <coughs> your itchy eyes. Walter started coughing again. <coughs> I, 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 I can get you some, the man offered. No, 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 thanks, said Walter. He buried his head in his pillow. <gasps> and his coughing stopped. And he fell asleep. Oh, my goodness, look at that. All those pipes with smoke coming out of them. Woo! Snowflakes fell on Walter. He was high in the mountains and a group of people wearing snowshoes and long fur coats hiked past his bed. Where, where are you going? Walter asked. Oh, uh, to the hotel, one of them replied. Walter turned around and he, he saw an enormous building and a sign on it read, Hotel Everest. Yeah, is that a hotel? asked Walter. On top of Mount Everest? Yes, said one of the hikers. Isn't it beautiful? Well, uh -huh, Walter began, but the group didn't wait for his answer. They waved goodbye and marched away. Walter stared at the flashing yellow sign and then crawled back beneath his sheets. But there was more to see. Walter's hand was wet and cold, and when he opened his eyes, he found himself floating on the open sea, drifting toward a fishing boat. Now, the, the men on the, the boat were, were laughing and <laughs> and dancing and, and Walter Walter called hey, ship ahoy Walter shouted and the fishermen they waved at him. Well uh, what's the, the celebration for? he asked. Oh we've just caught a fish one of them yelled back. Yeah it's our second one this week and they held up their small fish for Walter to see. Uh, aren't you supposed to throw the little ones back? Walter asked. But the fishermen didn't hear him. They were busy singing, ha <laughs> ha, oh yeah, <laughs> and dancing. Walter turned away, and soon the rocking of the bed put him to sleep. But only for a moment. A loud shrieking horn lifted Walter off his mattress and, and he jumped up and there were cars and trucks all around him honking, horns honking loudly and creeping inch by inch and every driver had a, a, a car phone in one hand and a big cup of coffee in the other and when the traffic stopped completely the honking grew even louder. Walter could not get back to sleep. Hours passed, and he wondered if he'd be
be stuck on this highway forever. He pulled his pillow tightly around his head. This can't be the future, he thought. Where, where are the, the tiny airplanes, the, the, the robots? But the honking continued into the night until finally, one by one, the cars became quiet as the drivers and Walter went to sleep. But his bed traveled on. Walter looked up. A horse stood right over his bed, staring directly at him. And in the saddle was a woman wearing cowboy clothes. Oh, my, my horse likes you, she said. Oh, <clears throat> go, good, replied Walter, who wondered where he'd ended up this time. All he could see was a dull yellow haze. Son, the woman told him, spreading her arms out in front of her, this is the mighty Grand Canyon. Walter gazed into the foggy distance. Well, of course, she went on, with all this uh, smog, nobody's gotten a good look at it for years. But the woman offered to sell Walter some postcards that showed the canyon in the old days. They're, they're real pretty, she said, but he couldn't look. It's just a dream, he told himself. I know I'll, I'll wake up soon, ba back in my room. Wow, look at that, that big lizard over there. Oof. Walter looked out from under his sheets. Now his bed was flying through the night sky and a flock of ducks passed overhead. And then one of them landed on his bed. And to Walter's surprise, he began to speak. Quack, quack. I hope you don't mind, the bird said. Eh, quack, quack. If I take a short rest here, now the ducks had been flying for days looking for the pond where where they'd always uh, stopped to eat. Well, well, I, I'm sure it's it's down there somewhere, Walter said, though he suspected something awful might have happened. And after a while, the duck waddled to the edge of the bed and he took a deep breath and he flew off good, good good luck walter called to him and then he pulled the blanket over his head it's it's just a dream he whispered and he wondered if it would ever end And then finally, Walter's bed returned to the present. He was safe in his room again, but he felt terrible. The future he'd seen was not what he'd expected. Robots and little airplanes didn't seem very important now. He looked out his window at the trees and lawns in the early morning light. And then all of a sudden he jumped up out of bed. And he ran outside and down the block, still in his pajamas, he found the empty jelly donut bag that he'd thrown at the fire hydrant the day before. And then Walter went back home and before the sun came up, sorted all the trash by the garbage. A few days later, on Walter's birthday, all of his friends came over for cake and ice cream, and they loved his new toys, the laser gun set, the, uh, the electric yo-yo, and inflatable dinosaurs. <laughs> but my best present, Walter told them, is outside. And then he showed them 
the gift that he'd picked out that morning. A tree. Well, after the party, Walter and his dad planted the birthday present. And when he went to bed, Walter looked out his window and he could see his tree and the tree Rose had planted on her birthday. He liked the way they looked side by side. And then he went to sleep, but not for long, because that night Walter's bed took him away again. And when Walter woke up, his bed was standing in the shade of two tall trees. And the sky, the sky was blue, and laundry was hanging from a clothesline, flapping in the breeze. And a man pushed an old motorless lawnmower. This isn't the future, Walter thought. It's the past. Hey, good morning, the man said. Hey, you've found a nice place to sleep. Yeah, yes, I have, Walter agreed. There was something very peaceful about the huge trees next to his bed. And the man looked up at the rustling leaves. My great-grandmother planted one of these trees, he said, when she was just a little girl. Walter looked up at the leaves, too, and he realized where his bed had taken him. This was the future, after all, a different kind of future. There were, there were still no robots or tiny airplanes. There weren't even any clothes dryers or gas-powered lawnmowers. Walter lay back and smiled. I like it here, he told the man, and then he drifted off to sleep in the shade of the two giant trees, the trees he and Rose had planted so many years ago. What do you think? Oof, pretty nice. Chris Van Alsberg, like I said, he's the winner of two Caldecott medals for Jumanji, maybe some of you have read that book or seen the movie, uh, and The Polar Express, another one of his popular books. And he was the recipient of the Caldecott honor for the Garden of Abdul Ghazazi. The author and illustrator of numerous picture books for children, he has also been awarded the Regina Medal for Lifetime Achievement in Children's Literature. Chris Van Alsberg was formerly an instructor at the Rhode Island School of Design, and he lives in Rhode Island. Do you think he lives in a place like that? I don't know. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Have any of you ever seen anything quite like that? A neighborhood like that? Well, there's a picture of Chris Van Alsberg, okay? And you can see down below there. I mean, if you want to look up more on him, you can go look him up in Wikipedia. He was born June 18th, 1949. I'm two years older. I was born in 1947. Uh, and he's an illustrator. He was born in... Uh, East Grand Rapids, Michigan, okay? And, uh, and and don't forget about Walt Kelly, okay? And, we, and what Pogo had to say, we have met the enemy, and he is us. And the enemy certainly wasn't Chris Van Alsberg. It, are you your own worst enemy? Are you a, a, someone who throws litter around and, 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 and messes up the the outside and and doesn't sort through the trash and you know you keep things kind of a mess and you never care about what's going on outside pollution how many know what I'm talking about yep yep 
do what you can, okay? You don't want to be part of the problem. You want to be part of the solution, okay? The end is near. Boy, it sure seems that way, doesn't it? So many things are happening now. Oof. All right. See you next time.